Hi guys, this is Miss Gold. Today's lesson is Module 4, Lesson 6, Simple Interest, Tax, and Commission Real World Problems. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students solve simple interest problems using the formula I equals P times R times T, where I is equal to interest, P is equal to principal, R is equal to interest rate, and T is equal to time. When using the formula I equals P times R times T, students recognize that units for both interest rate and time must be compatible. Students convert the units when necessary. Students solve real-world percent problems involving tax, gratuities, commission, and fees. Students solve real-world problems involving percent using equations, tables, and graphs. And finally, students identify the constant of proportionality, tax rate, commission rate, etc., in graphs, equations, tables, and in the context of the situation. The first thing I'd like you to do is to pause the video and complete the opening exercise. When you're ready to continue, unpause the video and please check over your answers. And please check over your answer. So if you notice, with each of these examples, they actually are all saying the same thing. They're asking you to find 10% of 2,000. What's different about them is that they are looking at different real world scenarios. So A is talking about commission. Commission is the amount of money that a person makes when they are working a sales job. So they usually make a percentage of their sales. Part B is talking about the taxes that are paid for a hotel room. Part C is talking about the shipping fees for shipping a new computer and printer. And Part D is talking about the tip on a dinner bill for a wedding rehearsal dinner. So we can see the same mathematics applied over several different situations. One new formula that we need to look at in this lesson is how to calculate what's called simple interest. Now, simple interest is the idea of your money in a bank account collecting interest, but it's always based off of the original amount you put in the bank. So simple interest is principal times rate times time. And so when we change these into variables, we get I equals P times R times T. So let's talk about what those different variables mean. The principal is the amount of money that you're starting with in the bank account. The rate is going to be your interest rate, so that is a percentage, so you're going to need to turn that into a decimal, as we've talked about in this module. It's usually based over a period of time, typically an interest rate over a year. T in this scenario is the time, and what you need to understand is that both T and R must be compatible. So if they tell you the interest rate is based over a time period of a year, but the time period they give you is only six months, you're gonna to have to turn six months into a year's time. So that would be half of a year. So you have to always be aware that your rate and time must be compatible. Using that idea, let's take a look at example one. Can money grow? A look at simple interest. Larry invests $100 in a savings plan. The plan pays 4.5% interest each year on his $100 account balance. How much money will Larry earn in interest after three years, after five years. So we're looking at calculating simple interest. So we're starting with our formula. I equals P times R times T. So the principal is the original amount that was invested, in this case $100. So we can fill in P with 100. The rate is the interest rate, which is 4.5%. So we're going to have to turn 4.5% into a decimal. So 4.5 is 4.5%. And so if we turn that into a decimal, we're going to get 0 0.045. So we'll multiply this times 0 0.045. And the time is first three years. Now, we need to make sure that this matches. And it does say that it pays four and a half interest each year and we're looking at years. So we know they are compatible. So we multiply this one by three and multiply these out and we will get 1350. And this is when our interest rate was over three years. And we can also calculate when our interest rate is over five years. So our principal is still the same here. Our interest rate is still the same. But this time, it's over a course of five years. So we'll change that to a five. 
And the effect this has is it will be $22.50. How can you find the balance of Larry's account at the end of five years? So this is just calculating the interest. So we know that interest is then added back into the bank account. So here we would take the $22.50 that they earned in interest and add it to the principal. So we have a final balance in Larry's account of $122.50. So you always wanna be aware of whether they are asking you for the final account balance or just the interest. Example two, time other than one year. A $1,000 savings bond earns simple interest at the rate of 3% each year. The interest is paid at the end of every month. How much interest will the bond have earned after three months? So in this case, we know that the interest rate is 3% per year but we're only looking at how much interest will have been earned after three months. So when we go to calculate this, we're still starting with our formula, I equals P times R times T. The principal in this case was 1,000, and the rate is 3%, so we'll turn that into a decimal, 0.03. However, when we're looking at the time, we have to translate that into the equivalent of years. So when we turn three months into a year, we'd want to divide that by 12. And this gives us one quarter of a year. So instead of multiplying by three, we're going to multiply by one quarter. So you always have to make sure that you are looking at whether the interest rate period matches the time period units. Multiplying these out, we end up with an interest value of $7.50. Notice in this question, they're not asking for the final amount that was in the savings account, so we're just answering how much interest was earned. So I stopped at $7.50, I didn't add it back into the $1,000. Example three, solving for P, R, or T. So they won't always give you P, R, and T and ask you to find interest. Sometimes they're going to give you two of the three elements and then they'll give you the interest and you have to solve for the unknown element. Just like any other situation, we would always use our unknown element as a variable and you can leave it as the variable given or you can always change it to X if you're more comfortable with that. So example three says Mrs. Williams wants to know how long it will take an investment of $450 to earn $200 in interest if the yearly interest rate is 6.5% paid at the end of each year. So let's start with our interest formula, I equals P times R times T. And let's fill in what we know. We know that she wants to earn $200 in interest, so we can replace I with 200. The principal is the amount that she invested, so this would be $450. The rate for this is 6.5%, so as a decimal, that would be 0 0.065. What we don't know is how long, and that's what they want us to calculate, how long will it take? So we have T, and you can either leave it as T, I don't really like to use T as a variable, so let's change it to X. So what we're doing here is just solving an equation. We'd start by simplifying this side. So we're gonna multiply 450 times 0 0.065. And when we do that, we get 2925. Now, if I wanna solve for X, we're multiplying 2925 by X. So we're gonna do the opposite operation, which is to divide. Those cancel, and we get x is equal to 6.84. Now, because it's paid at the end of each year, in order to get to the $200 or more, we're going to have to actually go up. So we'll round this up to seven years.